Hi guys, good evening and welcome along to the wedding show. Tonight I'm joined by Mirren McDermott. Hi Mirren. Hello. <laughs> Mirren is a, a beauty... Beauty therapist. Beauty yeah. therapist. Beauty, <laughs> Mirren's a beauty therapist. Uh, Brian is on production. Richard is off um, in on holiday. So big hi to Richard. I'm sure he's watching. He's in Spain tonight. So that's kind of cool that we have a Spanish, somebody in Spain watching us, Brian, isn't it? Yeah. Sitting drinking a cocktail. <laughs> 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 Sipping well, pina colada. Brian next to sounds the, jealous. <laughs> yeah, next to the pool. Um, guys, we're going to be with you for the next wee while. We have a load of stuff to get through. Merrin's got some tips, some beauty tips. So if you have some questions you'd like to ask Merrin, put them in the comment section below. Remember that the show is sponsored by My Wedding Store. My Wedding Store is everything you need from um, a wedding shop. We do hire, we do retail, and of course we have the website as well with myweddingstore.ie. So make sure to check that out. Maren, before we get started, you have a couple of things you want to give away. Yeah, so we're going to do a, a little giveaway for a biosurface peel. So if that's a Dermalogica do a biosurface peels, which is because we're on a bridal beauty show, I thought it was very in keeping. Will, will they know what that is now? <laughs> so a peel is basically... <laughs> you don't need one. I don't need one, yes. Don't need one. <laughs> a peel is basically where you're kind of stripping away the dead layers of skin um, so that you get that glow for your wedding day. So it's nice to have I a start stick my head out the window to get that. That effect. That's more like a dog, you know, yeah. just a <laughs> little bit of sandpaper, maybe. A bit of sandpaper, yeah. Just the job, but yeah. not quite the same. But um, you can have a course of these facials kind of on the run up to a wedding. Right. Um, and they're great for just, yeah, uh, giving that like nice, fresh look to the skin. Okay. Yeah. That's so the one. we're going to do a giveaway for that. And what's the second prize? And the other one then is a little uh, Kerastas. Um, Curry Stat. <laughs> Curry start. Curry start. I've been trying to teach him for a while, but it's not working. Curry start. But uh, Curry start. it's a little kind of hair care package, so there's loads of little goodies in there for the hair. So all right. So how yeah. how do they win? How do how can somebody win? Um. So if you tag a bride uh, in the comments below. Okay. So tag a bride in the comment section below, um, and um, at some stage towards the end we'll. Pick a winner. We'll I pick guess. a winner. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Okay. I'll leave it to you, Mick. Yeah, no problem at all. Um. Mer, just. Jumping in, I'll say hi to Martina Cunningham Small. Martina says, hello to all the wedding store gang. I missed a few shows. Shame on you, Martina. <laughs> Shame on you. I'm very disappointed. We're glad you're back. Yeah, we're glad you're back. <laughs> um, Mary Clark has joined us. Hi, Mary. Well done, Mirren. True professional. Love all from the Diamond Coast. <laughs> Thank well, you, Mary. <laughs> Mary's great. Love Mary. Uh, so if you want to be in a chance to win these, or if you've got a question for Mirren, then please leave them in the comment section below. We'll pop back to the social media in a little while. But in the meantime, it's the Merrin Show. <laughs> <laughs> I told what Mick if, I was going to take over. What have, got, <laughs> what have you got for us? Um, so we're just going to give some little tips for brides, uh, basically kind of the beauty tips on the run-up to their wedding day. So um, if you have any questions in particular on a certain area, feel free to ask. Um, I suppose some of my top tips um, would be for, well, we'll start with... Just, just before you start, yeah. right? Um, I, we had we had some people on a few weeks back, and one of the things I asked was, um, if when you land at a wedding or if a bride comes in to the yeah. salon, what's the one thing you couldn't live without? <laughs> Putting you right on the spot, like a good tip for a bride for their day. No, uh, I mean, what's the one piece of equipment you couldn't do without? Brush, paintbrush, lipstick, roller, tray. Oh, that's a really tricky one. Trowel. Tweezers. Tweezers. <laughs> Tweezers are really important because I love a good eyebrow. You love a good eyebrow. <laughs> all right. Okay. We've a bit of work to do there. <laughs> all, right, all right. Okay. So yeah. give us, give us, give us some tips. So. Uh, well, we'll, we'll start with the eyebrows. <laughs> we'll start with the eyebrows. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So uh, I. I meet people every day of the week, obviously, coming in, getting their eyebrows uh, shaped, maybe, or not. I might meet them for their makeup trial for a wedding. And they'll say to me, oh, I have a really bad eyebrow or my eyebrows aren't great. But a lot of people have actually really good eyebrows, but maybe they need a little bit of tint to kind of emphasize them a little bit more. Or the tweezers just to tidy them up. There's also threading, which is like a, a sort of, it started really in indie, I think. And uh, that's threading to take the hairs out and give your eyebrows a good shape. But... There's no point in coming in the week of your wedding and expecting to get a good shape on your brows. It takes time to kind of nurture them Why? and get a really good shape because some people will have over plucked them, taken the ends off them. So we might need them to let them grow back. Um, so we generally, I'd prefer if people come in six months before. And what about a bride who comes in with a big long piece of an eyebrow 
for a fella. Do you, I mean, do you do yeah, fellas' eyebrows? we have, yeah. You'd often see fellas, yeah. especially older fellas, and they'd have, you know... Tidy big, them up and maybe even trim them a little bit as well. Big bushy eyebrow, like, I mean... Yeah. There's no need Men's for eyebrows are actually great to do because they generally have a lot of eyebrows, so there's right. plenty to work with. Plenty to work with. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it is great. Um, but yeah, if they come in like a couple of months before, you can kind of get their eyebrows into a really good shape. So you, you, start, you start out four or five months out... And then... Yeah, every four weeks sort of thing, you'd have a little visit. A visit um, beauty visit. Yeah, get them tinted and waxed or tinted and tweezed, depending. And what about what about these people who get the eyebrows, you know, completely gone and they draw them in? Them? What's the point of well, that? Well, you, you can't draw them on for the day of the wedding, so your makeup artist will do that for you. But it's nice to have a good brow. I, it frames the face. So yeah, well, why, do, why do people... Take them off. Yeah, and then draw them back on. It doesn't seem logical to me. I don't know. <laughs> you don't know, but they like it. I'm glad they do, though, because it keeps us in business. All right, fair enough, fair place. <laughs> you can also get, like, the brow tattooing, which we do at the salon, which is where you actually tattoo on hair strokes. Yeah, I'll do those for you. <laughs> can, you can you do them on the head? <laughs> you can, actually. You tattoo dots on the head, but we don't do that. No, but, I wouldn't. Yeah. No, no, change all so, yeah. the cards and everything. <laughs> So eyebrows are important. Yeah, eyebrows are important. I I really think that they're they frame the face. They really look important. Like, right. And really what look. about eyelashes then? A lot of girls I see at weddings get the false eyelashes. Yeah. Do you have to get false eyelashes? No, not at all. You're, you, I mean, are yours real? No. No. All right, okay. <laughs> Sorry, that's a personal question. Do they look real? <laughs> no, they, they do. They do look real. It's good. They do look real. Uh, they're not essential, but they help open the eyes a little bit. Right. Um, so I I love them. And do you find that do you find that a lot of the fellas have great eyelashes in comparison to the ladies? I don't know. I think it's because or is it just kids? We're always my yeah. little, my, my, my little my grandson has has fabulous eyelashes. Well, apparently your eyelashes are one thing that when you're born they don't grow. You know, they your eyelashes are the same length as a child as they will be as an adult. So they obviously look quite big on your face. Right. So they say that's why on kids that eyelashes. Oh, right, okay. Don't cool. know if it's true or I not. Don't know, I don't know. Let us know. Yeah. I'll tell you a st- my story about oh. eyelashes. I was in the Radisson one day doing a wedding and I had a mother of the bride, a lovely lady. She was like, I'm, I don't want any of those lashes. And I said, I'll stick a few lashes on for you and, you know, see what you think of them. Oh, God, no, I don't know about that. And I said, well, I'll put two or three on the ends. We'll give you a look in the mirror. If you don't like them, I'll take them straight back off. I said, we won't even stick the glue on. So I got out the glue, stuck a tiny little bit on each one. And I thought, we'll take these back off if she doesn't like them. So I said, go off now, have a little look in the mirror and come back in a few minutes and tell me what you think. So she went off and she came back and she said, yeah, I like those. And I was like, okay, grand. And she was like, people won't notice them, will they? And I said, no, they'll know your eyes look good and they'll know your eyes are nice and bright and open. So, you know, it'll be nice, but they're not going to know your false lashes on. So she went off and then I started to do her daughter's makeup and then she came back about 10 or 15 minutes later and she said, nobody's noticed my eyelashes. And I said, yeah. And then she was like, what do you mean I thought they'd notice? I've gone around now to my sisters and a few other people around the hotel and nobody said anything. Yeah. And I was like, but you didn't want them to notice your eyelashes. I was like, did they say you look well? Well, they did, but they never noticed my lashes. I said, will I put on a few more? I think you should. <laughs> So, so there you, you go. So you lashed them on. <laughs> so I lashed them on. <laughs> so yeah, I do. I it love accentu- the lashes. It, it, the eyelashes accentuate the eyes, obviously. Yeah, they just make your eyes look a little bit bigger and a little bit more open. Are they essential for a bride? You think yes. so? Yes. I, I put them on everybody. We right. include lashes. We don't even charge extra for them because I'm right. like, I want everyone to have lashes on their wedding day. And there is also like other options where... Um, you can add in individual lashes. They're like semi-permanent lashes. So you add one individual lash to each of your own lashes. Now, we don't do those. There are, there's a few girls in Sligo that kind of specialise and we just send them to those girls. Right, They're okay. really good at them. Yeah. Right, right. So, and, and do brides have to, again, do they have to come to you a couple of months in advance to get used to them, the eyelashes? No. Or, are girls used to them at this stage? No, I think most girls are used to them. And to be honest, they're very light and the glue that we use will be a latex glue. It's duo glue. So it's very, um, it doesn't sting the eyes. Uh, how long does it last then? I normally tell people it just lasts for the night. Now, right. sometimes it will last for a few days, but Will we they put just fall on. off naturally or do you have to, you know... They cut probably on the pillow the morning after the wedding unless you're going to go and take all right. your makeup off. You, you, so. wake, you wake up and, oh my yeah. God, there's a spider <laughs> on my pillow. Yeah, yeah. That's what it does look a little bit like. So, right. But uh, yeah, no, they're, they're really, really nice. I do. I think they are essential for a bride for a wedding day. But you don't need to do anything. The only thing I would say is if you've got blonde lashes or very light-coloured lashes, you might like to think about getting your eyelashes tinted. 
and you would do that generally about three or four days before the wedding when you were getting your eyebrows done so you get your eyebrows waxed and tinted and your eyelashes tinted three or four days before kind of make sure eyelashes stand out a little bit more as well but if you have blonde hair and then you have to fill them in with mascara and put lashes on top the tint will definitely help make them stand out a little bit more what about um bags under the eyes then as we, we stay with the yeah. eyes just for a minute yeah yeah um again i suppose uh, we had who was it on we had somebody on recently where they recommended that you didn't go partying five nights before yeah. on the trot before your wedding Not no matter how much no, no matter how much <laughs> People are inviting you out and taking you to dinner and all the rest of it. You don't do that sort of thing before your wedding, do you? You're you take it handy. Off. Yeah. Because you, your eyes will, you, your eyes will show it, won't they? Yeah, I would say I'll backtrack a little bit to a couple of months before your wedding and say that a lot of people use eye cream around the eye area, or sorry, moisturizer inside the eye area. So we're talking about round here. Right. Okay. So my advice is when you're kind of getting into your skincare routine, which you should. You should always have a really good skincare routine, but if you don't... When should you start your skincare routine then? At least six months before. For your wedding? Yeah. No, you should always have a skincare routine anyway. You should, but, yeah. But maybe you're doing a little bit extra or you're taking care of, of those blotches or yeah. you're making sure you're not doing the dog in it and going out drinking and, you know, <laughs> yeah. the whole time, you know, leading up to your wedding. So you're talking six months out. Yeah. With, with just... your wedding in mind. A lot of times when people are getting towards their wedding, they want that glow on skin for their wedding day. And they think that they're going to get a glow just because they're their makeup married. artist on the yeah, morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you'll have that little glow. But um, you're best off to start a good skincare routine a couple of months before. And people generally um, kind of, because of their wedding coming up, they think about it more. They're getting into facials more. So there's no point in starting a skincare routine a month before your wedding because your skin has to get used to that new routine. So it, it could to, end up being to, 10 times worse. You have to give it a chance to breathe and stuff, don't yeah. you? Yeah. Well, if you start a new routine, often if it's a really good routine that you're on, it's going to clear out all the rubbish in your okay, skin. Okay, let me ask you a question. On the, on, let's say the week leading up to um, a wedding, should the bride go easy on the makeup? On her makeup? Um, yeah. <laughs> That can depend. I suppose if somebody wears makeup all the time and it's the week before their wedding, they're meeting a lot of suppliers. As, as, as some people, some people, it, you know, they wear makeup because um, not that their work requires it, yeah. but they're in a in a job where they wear makeup every day. Yeah. Would you say to them to ease off on it, maybe a little? If you can, avoid it. But if you can't, that's fine. Obviously, wear it. But I would say, and I say this to everybody, not just brides, but cleanse your skin properly at night time, tone it. You'll have to exfoliate. People exfoliate daily or weekly, depending on the type of exfoliator and their skin type. Right. So I would say just make sure you're really cleaning your skin well at night. Right. Drinking loads of water. I don't think I don't know anybody who drinks enough water. Drink loads of water, people. Not loads champagne. Of, no, not champagne. <laughs> just. Yeah, I, I'm just. I was going to come to them now in a second, uh, just to let people know at home if you've joined us late. We have a couple of um, prizes to give away tonight. To be able to chance to win one of these um, facial type prizes, what are they? So it's a Dermalogica Biosurface Peel, which is a peel for your skin. Peel for your skin. Or a little curry stas hamper as and well. And a curry stas, a curry stas thing. Lovely hair care. <laughs> for your hair. <laughs> yeah. um, will we go to the social media? And, do you want to answer a few questions? Yeah, go for it. All right, okay. Um, Katrina Ford, Marilyn, what ex Foliator, do you re recommend before a spray tan? So do you have a preference? It's, it's probably, I presume, because you're talking about spray tan, it's body exfoliator. Um, so I don't really have a preference for a body exfoliator. I, I'd even, you can make up on yourself at home. So you can get like brown sugar and honey. Brown sugar and olive oil is a brilliant one for your body because it goes a lot further. Mix it up in a bowl into the shower because it's really messy and then you use it so and like you, you just put it on all over yeah circular movements anywhere that you get really dry skin so your elbows knees anywhere like that that'll be a little bit drier yeah so you're all over and then shower off afterwards and then your moisturizer on after that um i would also say while we're talking about like spray tans um, or a fake tan that you do yourself at home that you should probably do it my advice would be two days before your wedding. If you like a really light tan, three days before. And I would also say if you're getting a spray tan, to spray tan your face because 
as a makeup artist, I often notice people with spray tan up to the neck or around this area. And they, and they expect you then to and colour match. And you can colour match, but in photographs, I've noticed you'll see it, no matter how perfect it looks in because photographs. Because you have the extra flash or, you have or the not. extra flash, yeah, yeah. Or, okay. or not, but you do still see. Okay. Um, so thanks for that, thanks for that Katrina. Yeah. Um, Emer Sweeney, um, she must have, yeah. Emer Sweeney, what's the best lashes I've seen... I've, as I've seen brides with fake lashes and also when should you get them done? We've, well, we've covered that. How close to the wedding day? So fake lashes, we've covered that, didn't we? We've said... Yeah, well, if if you're talking about types of lashes, I would say if you've got a makeup artist coming to the house, they'll generally use strip and individual lashes. So strip lashes is where they come on a full row and then individuals is where they're like in little pods. And what do you use to stick them on then? Super glue, is it? <laughs> You'll be a job getting that Joking. Joking. <laughs> Don't try that at home. Staples. Uh, we use a latex glue, unless, of course, somebody was allergic to latex. But uh, you'd, you'd ask them that, obviously, before you applied their lashes. Right. Um, strip lashes are great for using at home yourself. But for weddings, I personally prefer the individuals because you can build them up at the end. You can get a nice little row of shorts on underneath and then put your, like, mediums along at the end. And also, and I'm sure everybody watching this is nearly aware by now, but... Pennies do the most fantastic range of lashes. Um, they're called PS I Love You Individual Lashes. They're 150 a pack. And there's a good little pod in them. So they're great for using at home yourself if you want to try them out beforehand. They're really good value. And they also sell the Duo Glue Adhesive, which is really, really good value as well. So they're worth trying out. Yeah. Plug there for pennies. Yeah. <laughs> thanks for that. <laughs> Kirsty, um, thanks, thanks, Emer. Thanks for that question. Kirst, um Kirsty Custard Cawley. <laughs> oh, that must be her Facebook name. Okay, yeah. sorry. <laughs> Kirsty Cawley. <laughs> Kirsty Cawley. Can you please ask Marin what she recommends to keep the makeup on all day? 10, 10, 20, is it? <laughs> I'm glad you're not a makeup artist. <laughs> so uh, there's a few things. Obviously, good skincare routine on the run up to your wedding is brilliant because gives you a good foundation doesn't it the best foundation yeah you can't have your makeup done on a wedding day with really dry skin and it flaking off and expect your makeup artist to fix your skin like a, that morning like a leper I wouldn't say that <laughs> it's not going to work so yeah no uh, I would say a good skincare routine for the six months before six months at least. out yeah and should you um, change it up then two months n- no no just yeah. keep keep it steady uh, once a month pop in to see you or you don't even need to I would say to people, it's more important your skincare routine at home. Obviously, facials are brilliant. And if you're going to be really good and looking after your skin and that's what you really want, you need your facials. But your skincare routine at home, you're doing every morning and every evening. That is the most essential thing to get right if you want that glow Cleanse skin. your skin, get rid of the makeup. Cleanse, tone, exfoliate, eye cream. They're kind of your basics. Maybe serums. Cleanse, tone, ex- exfoliate. Exfoliate and moisturiser. And moisturiser. Yeah. Do you hear that, Brian? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Going back to what Kirsty said, and you'll have to remind me now. What her question Kirsty was. says, how, "How do you keep the makeup on all day?" So good skin uh, that really helps. Uh, primer on the morning of your wedding, so you'll be using what a different kind of primer? primer depending on the skin type. So there's primers for redness in your skin. There's primers for oily skin. Right. There's primers for dry skin. There's loads, and I have loads of favourites for each type. Right. So I pick what I think is going to suit the person, or I'll ask them questions about their skin, and I've met them for their trial, and if not, I'll have talked to them online or over the phone. How, how far out should people be looking at booking their makeup artist? When do you like to talk to people first? It's generally two years, year and a half in advance. I know that seems crazy, but that does seem what it, you know what it's gone to now it is the only thing is I will say there's a lot more makeup artists in the industry now Yeah. so if we're not available I always know somebody else in the industry that mm. I can pop somebody along to you, you know somebody that I'd have worked with before or, with oh yeah, yeah definitely okay. so okay. Okay. Um, I'll go back to Kirsty's for one second and okay. say yeah. that a good foundation obviously will help so we would use some really good foundations and that would also depend on the person's skin powder sets it afterwards so you're putting on a layer of powder because it's setting the liquid foundation and then you also use setting spray on top Mick is like what it's like hairspray for your face so uh, Urban Decay do a lovely setting spray I love that what's the name of it Urban Decay Urban Decay yeah <laughs> there's like a 24 hour one or there's an oil one so you spray that on on top right. and then generally for bright really oily skin I would recommend a powder 
I think Kirsty's actually getting married abroad, so in the sun like that, you definitely need a powder for um, your wedding day to keep your makeup set for the day. Right, okay. Yeah. So yeah, bride getting married abroad then, and that and. If they don't bring a makeup art, now you're you're going to her wedding. I am going to Christie's yeah, so wedding. I knew that now. <laughs> um, so a bride lands out in wherever to get her makeup done. Is there? And she she obviously is going to somebody like you. Yeah. Up to that point, and let's say you're not going to the wedding. Yes. What does she do then when she lands out? So how does she protect her skin, or what does she need to tell the makeup artist? Okay. In situ. So I have found that a lot of the times for weddings abroad, um, the wedding planners out there, you're generally dealing with an Irish wedding planner or somebody in the industry who knows of a good makeup artist yeah. out there. So you'll have your makeup artist pick. You might be lucky enough to have been out and had a trial. Yeah. Um, I suppose things to consider is if you get your makeup done here and you like certain things here, make sure you photograph your makeup up close so that your makeup artist knows what you like. And what products maybe that they've used. Yeah. So that somebody out there... Will have an idea of what you like. Of an equivalent product. Exactly. Like some people would like a heavy coverage foundation, some might like lighter. So if they know that, they're already going kind of armed. And is there anything that brides need to consider then, whereas they're getting makeup done here in comparison to out there where it's much warmer? Yeah. So the other thing they have to keep in mind, I suppose, if they're getting married in, we'd say, Spain, somewhere sunny, they're going to arrive out a few days before their wedding. They need to make sure that they're wearing SPF every day up until their wedding on their face. The last thing you want is to have burned for your body and face. You don't want to be burned for your wedding day. So you need to make sure that you're wearing your SPF every day. For their skin, obviously, you know, you're going to be a little bit more sweatier. It's it's a bit more humid. But... Everybody has worked, anybody who's worked in weddings abroad will know that you kind of prep the skin, you might use different primers to avoid that, and you'll definitely be using powder throughout the day. Um, so there's a few things you'd have to take into consideration, but anyone who's working in that environment would know, know what to do. Okay, okay. Yeah. All right. Um, there's another question in here uh, from Katrina. Mary, my scalp has got very dry. What treatment would you recommend? I wouldn't know <laughs> if I'm being honest. I'm not the best. Uh, I suppose I work at the Hair and Beauty Quarter in Sligo, so I would say pop into any of the hairdressers and they can recommend. Because I'm not from a hair point of view, yeah. I wouldn't be the best person to recommend Answer it. That. So yeah. when my scalp is dry... Will, will, you, will you get back to Katrina then on that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's no problem. Okay, I so. had dry scalp myself, if I'm being honest. I used a Kerastas. This is actually why we got Kerastas into the salon. I used a Kerastas um, shampoo and conditioner just for three months until the bottles were gone and I don't suffer from the problem anymore. Right. It worked for me, but in saying that, you might have to try a few different types of shampoos and conditioners. It might not work for you. You might need to try something else. Everyone's skin is different, so... Okay. Sorry, okay. Katrina, I can't help you anymore, but I will. <laughs> but she'll come back to you, I will, Katrina, yeah. okay? So she'll come back to you in, in due course. Um, let me just have another one. Let me just see, is there anything else? Um... Dun, 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 dun. No. Just to let you know, guys, if you have joined us late, there are two prizes up for grabs. What do they need to do to win? So just tag a friend in tag the comments bride. below. Tag a bride. Yeah. Um, one of them is for appeal, um, which is like appeal to give that lovely glow for your wedding day. The other one is a little Kerstas, um hair care kit. So there's loads of lovely goodies in there as well. All right. So yeah. tag a bride, guys, and um, we'll pick... Uh, couple of winners towards the end of the show yeah okay continuing on next i have another little uh, i was just thinking about this earlier and i was like it's not the nicest little subject to talk about but i was like this is a good opportunity All to right. tell brides about this on the run of their wedding day um so it's one of those things that women are like oh gosh you know a little bit of facial hair or hair on their lip you know that type of thing that so if a girl has a mustache yeah, <laughs> um, or even hair, hair on their sides or anything that they're feeling a little bit self-conscious of. They don't um, need to, first of all. No, everybody has it. Everybody has it. <laughs> Including you. No, you know, you know, that's the first thing. Yeah, do. absolutely. But if it is an issue, if they do think it is an issue, yeah, what, um, what, what do you do? So just on waxing or that, I would say if you haven't tried it before, but you're conscious of it and you're going to be conscious of it for your wedding, try it maybe in the six months or the three months even before your wedding. You generally need it done every four weeks. <coughs> Excuse me. That's okay. <laughs> I tried to keep it in. <laughs> I, might, I might get a glass of water if you get a chance, please. So, um, 
You would generally um, wax, I see a lot of people where they wax part of the hair. But I would say if you're going to wax for your wedding day, make sure you give a good wax all over. Because sometimes people leave a line of hair. I don't know if you notice this as a photographer, but um, they can once the makeup goes on, you can actually see that hair more clearly. So I would always say if you're going to somebody or your beautician for waxing, make sure that they do a full wax of the sides. If that's the area of concern or if you're getting the lip done, make sure it's the top of the lip and maybe underneath. And is it, is it a big deal to her? A, a lot of people, yeah, a, I, a lot of brides would say, oh, I feel really uncomfortable about that, you know. So it's something that a lot of people don't like talking about. But I'm like, that is obviously really important. If you feel uncomfortable about it, just get it waxed, yeah. you know, or thread it. What's um, thread it? Thread it is where you take it away with like, uh, you're basically using thread to remove the hair, but it's a really quick, effective Sounds way of getting painful. rid of it. Not that painful. I'll give you a whirl later. Oh, you're all right. You're all right. <laughs> yeah, um, and you can do the same with the brows. And just on that as well, if you're getting waxing done, um, I would get it done at least three days before the wedding. But I would preferably like to see it done five to six days before your wedding. When you wax, it leaves a residue on the skin. Yeah. So when you're trying to get makeup, <laughs> do you want a straw? <laughs> When you're trying to get makeup to stick to the area, it doesn't stick so well with waxing, having been done very soon beforehand. <laughs> That's Stop lovely. Pushing, I wish it was. <laughs> no glasses uh, to be drank from at the wedding store. <laughs> it's starting me now. <laughs> now, next. Um, so waxing, tanning, we've already spoken about. We'll go back a little bit, I think, to the skincare. Um, right. We haven't covered much on that and diet. Um, Is diet important for your skincare regime? Very. Right. Yeah, very, very important. Like, for right. want of a better word, so, if you're eating rubbish, yeah, it's everything you eat is going to come through on your skin. Right. So if you're eating a really good, healthy diet, like fresh green vegetables, fish, you know, things that are really good for you, you're going to see it on your skin. You're going to be glowing more. Drinking plenty of water. Right. How much water should somebody be drinking? Two litres a day. Yeah. I know I find it hard to do too. But if I had something coming up and I was really conscious, I would definitely try and get and my two litres in every day. what does the drinking of the water do for you? Flushes out your system. Flushes out your kidneys. Your whole body works better if you drink more water. It really is essential for your skin's an organ, so it needs it. You know. Right. You really look... 10 times better if you're drinking more water and just you know you'll see that glow more yeah mm. hydrates your skin or you know and even for oily skins as well just to flush that oil through their system and just leaves them with more of a glow so yeah obviously you're, if you're eating a diet that's high in processed foods sugars salt alcohol rubbish in other words yeah we all do it but yeah we're all guilty we all have yeah, our guilty pleasures you know um, so drink plenty of plenty of water the night before your wedding as well if you can avoid I know it's lovely to have your glass of champagne and I wouldn't take that away from anyone, but obviously if you can still drink plenty of water with it, that will show up on your day. I, you always know when you arrive to a house if a bride's been looking after their skin well, you know, you can really see it in their skin and right. they've been having their regular facials maybe or especially their skincare routine at right. home. It makes all the difference. Um, Brian, I think there's somebody at the front door. <laughs> there's a girl dropping back some stuff, I think. <laughs> She's a little bit early. Um, Ask her if she any questions for us. Well, sorry about that. We we continue on. We we'll continue on. Um, okay, so we've done we've done eyelashes, we've done eyes, we've done skin. Is there anything else that people need to worry about the skincare? Uh, yeah. So <laughs> the diet is really important, um, and starting from a while back as well. Um, skincare as well. One thing I've noticed. Um, this is no disrespect to the bloggers. I think they're amazing. I follow loads of them myself, and I take you know, bits and pieces from them. I do find that sometimes if a blogger recommends, in particular exfoliators, that everyone jumps on the bandwagon or um, maybe a mask. So say, for example, I, I had a girl a few weeks back and she was using a clay mask on her skin. And clay is very dehydrating, but brilliant for oily skin types. But I had a bride who already had really dehydrated skin and she was using a clay mask. Oh and her skin was really, really dry. And I said... Bring, come back into me and bring in your whole skincare routine, everything you have at home, and we'll have a look at it and just see what's what's going wrong. Because I had seen her a couple of months before and her skin wasn't so bad. So she had a clay mask. And I said, gosh, I said, you have a clay mask. And I said, you know, where did you get that from? Or 
where did you hear about that? And she said, oh, my favourite blogger. She uses it. What you her name? <laughs> no. What you her name? I love this blogger, actually. She's like, uh, she does makeup and I love her stuff. She's amazing. But I was like, oh, well, she probably has oily skin. So it's perfect for her, but not so perfect for you. So right. she's like, I didn't realise It's like realize a double negative, that. isn't it? Yeah, so you just have to be careful. So, like, go to your skincare specialist. There's loads of them. Um, and ask them to have a look at your skin. And we do a thing in the salon where you can bring all your own products with you. And we have a look in your product bag. And you, what you might be using is perfect, but you might not just be using it correctly. In the right way or the right yeah. order. Sometimes it's just, just a small change Just speaking up. of the salon, where, where is the salon? What's the salon called? Oh, it's the Hair and Beauty Quarter. And where is it? So 38 High Street. So it's on High Street in yeah. Sligo. Yeah. Okay, I, I presume. Come visit. You, I presume you have Facebook and. <laughs> yeah, we have that. Facebook. Our Facebook page is the Hair and Beauty Quarter. So yeah, yeah. check us out. Yeah. If you have any questions, always feel free to message us, and okay. we'll be glad to come back to you. Okay, so what else? Um, so let me think what other areas we have to cover. Do nails. You guys, do you, I was going to say, do you guys do nails? You do. do. <laughs> yeah, do yeah. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, Pedicures, manicures, we do nails, I suppose. We do shellac and vinyl looks. So shellac is like, this is shellac. It's like your two-week polish. It's on your own natural nail, so you're not adding to your nail. It's brilliant for your nails if it's applied correctly and removed correctly. So it's the C&D shellac. It's really, really nice. But if you want to extend your nails, then you're going to need to go and see like a gel nail technician. We don't have those at the salon, but we know loads of really good girls in Sligo, so we just recommend. So anything that we don't do in that area, we right. always know people who specialise in so it. So people can get their hair done in the salon, they can get their waxing done in the salon. Yeah, it would be a big waxing salon. It would be a big waxing salon. Yeah. Um, you'd have, you'd do uh, makeup. Makeup, a lot of makeup, tanning, facials, eyebrow tattooing, and we also do a microneedling facial, which is kind of more aimed towards your mother of the bride, or... Okay, now that you brought up Mother of the Bride, the, yeah. the, 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 be delicate here now, Michael, <laughs> the, the, I just call him the Mother of the Bride or Mother yeah. of the Groom then. Yeah, yeah. Um, is there anything different that they need to do before the wedding if to, to look their very, very best? Because after the bride and the cake, the Mother of the Bride and the Mother of the Groom get photographed the most. Yeah, um, we do have Mother of the Brides that come in for facials. And it would be mostly more so the microneedling facial. So now, would I be correct in saying that the mother of the bride, and when I say mother of the bride, I mean mother of the bride, mother of the groom. Yes. You know, <laughs> that, you know, somebody who, who would be usually in their mid 40s, late 40s, maybe probably early 50s. Yeah. Would that be about the average yeah, age? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Would they need a different regime or different type of makeup? Uh, to a bride in her late twenties, early thirties. Yeah, it, it would be different, and we just I I just cater to that particular mother. You right. know, everyone's mom is different. Some mums love piles the of big makeup. red lips, and yeah, you know, and they're and, used to it. Yeah, um, and other mums dress it down. Other mums are like, oh, you're you know, I don't wear any makeup. That's totally fine. I would say to a mum who isn't used to wearing makeup and feels uncomfortable, come for a trial. You know, if you've got another wedding on or another event, pop in and have a trial done with your makeup artist. It's no harm, and then you'll feel more comfortable in the morning. Um, because a lot of the times, the mums probably haven't had their makeup on in donkey's years. Oh, I've met mums who, on the morning of their daughter's wedding, they're like, this is the first time I've ever had my makeup done. You know? Really? Yeah, yeah. And they say, well, sure, I never got married at all. <laughs> you know, I suppose now it's become so big for weddings, but... Yeah, I suppose my, I think my mum's sister did her makeup for her wedding day, you know, and she did her own hair. She's a hairdresser. So right, right. yeah, that was the way it was. So I would say definitely pop in for a trial if you're feeling uncomfortable, but just let your makeup artist know that you don't normally wear it. You will need a bit, a nice bit of blush on the cheeks. You'll need it for the photographs, if nothing yeah, else. Yeah. No, I mean, never mind the outfit that you're going to yeah. be wearing, because you're going to get... 500 photographs taken the morning yeah. of a wedding or the day of a wedding anyway yeah and you're on camera or video you know and it's like a special morning with your daughter or your son you want to be seen looking at your like your best you've spent yeah. a lot of money generally on an outfit and a headpiece you might as well have a little bit of makeup on and most times actually all times that they've looked in the mirror afterwards mother of the brides they're they're my favorite reaction right better than a bride a bride is used to seeing the makeup on her mother of the brides are like oh my gosh like yeah. i really really like you know that i love that feeling because okay. they're just okay. 
so happy to see themselves done up and it's not over the top it's just that little bit of blush maybe their eyebrows filled in a little bit or a little bit of lipstick to just give that like boost would you do you have you recommended contacts for brides or have you any dealings with that no is it something that you've come across yeah i would leave it to the bride herself to decide what she wants to do i've seen brides where they like wearing their glasses and they feel more comfortable so with that i would say wear your glasses and be yourself yeah um a lot of the times you can get your lenses changed right i'm not an optician but you can get them changed so that when the flash hits the glass it doesn't reflect back yeah. So that you'll get to see your eyes a yeah, little bit more. Yeah, that's something that the photographers have um, a serious problem, problem with, with, I presume. Yeah. Unless the flash is at, you know, 45 degrees and all, you know, yeah. the rest of it. And for your eye makeup as well, it's good for your makeup artist. They'll ask you this to know. Are you going to be wearing your your, eye, your, your glasses the morning of your, yeah. of, your, of your wedding? Because depending on the type of uh, glass, we need to alter the makeup okay. as well to suit. What about um, lips then? Um, so exfoliating your lips it's perfect this time of year pretty much everyone's lips are in fairly good condition it's not cold right. damp weather Christmas weddings can be you know how do you November. avoid getting the dreaded cold sore the dreaded chapped lips before the wedding do you start a month out eating tons of oranges do you <laughs> is that supposed to work I don't know <laughs> gives you plenty of vitamin C anytime I, I, I have a cold coming on I uh, yeah. start munching on the oranges I, I don't it, there isn't no, nothing you can do to fully avoid it but obviously you can do your best to try and treat your lips so yeah. like exfoliator brown sugar and honey best job uh, rub Just around rub the lips for a few moments yeah very gently you don't want to irritate them right. um, wash it off and then pop on your lip balm. There's obviously lip balms can go from like two euro ninety nine. We've dermatological lip balms. I think or they're not balms; they're treatments. But do you do you use the lip balm in advance of a problem rather than yes. a solution to a problem? I would definitely try if you can. Like we can do our best for a bride on their wedding morning. We've got yeah, exfoliators. But, yeah, but, but a, a bride is getting married twenty ninth of December. Would you recommend? that on the 1st of December, she starts wearing lip balm yeah, every before. single day or before. It. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Especially if they're a bride that's outdoors or working in a lot of central heating. Right. Yeah, you can kind of work it into your skincare routine as well. It's just a simple little thing that you do every day. And would you recommend it for the fellas then as well? Yeah, would they listen? <laughs> um, well, if they don't want, you know, their face yeah. and bits. I mean, what, what can a fella do the morning of a... Uh, Manicures. Or... or, or, or in advance, manacles, nails. Yeah, I've seen so many photos of men's hands on the morning of a wedding or I've been in a groom's house where I'm doing the groom's family and I'm like, come here with those hands, right. <laughs> you know. Uh, so you get the emery board in your... Sh- oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> mine are too bad. Into a pot of bleach. <laughs> no, uh, manicure for a man before the wedding. I know right. some men are like, right. I'm not going into that salon, you and, know. And do you do... Um, makeup for men as well on occasion? Yeah, it's not so popular, obviously, but of course we do, yeah. Um, more so maybe to cover blemishes or spots, red noses. Again, because of the photos. Yeah. Just for the photos. Just for the photos. Not because they're vain or anything. No. Right. But men are becoming more, you know, a little bit more into themselves. And, right. you know, why not? Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. yeah. Okay. Right. Or waxing. Back wax. Chest wax. <laughs> All pain- these little bits of faces. Sounds painful. <laughs> Sounds very painful. We'll, go on th- we'll, we'll have a look here on the social media scenes there. A lot of, lot of um, Neve McMorrow. Well done, Mirren. Hi to Neve. Thank you, Neve. <laughs> um, I want to get this name right. I'm going to say ba- Bas- Basia. Basia, is it? Kowalska. Well done. Thank um, you. Um, Jebba Jebba Nelson. Michael, you're too. You're so to the point and down to earth. Love the honesty. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, Anne Young, another makeup artist. Well yeah. done, Murren. Uh Neve, Neve McMorrow. <laughs> well, we mentioned another Neve, makeup, another makeup yeah. artist. Very good. Um, she, both are excellent. Um, let me see who else is there. Graham Farrell says... That's our hairdresser. The got dry scalp. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, oh, he's after coming back to answering. Great. <laughs> okay, so he says the Kerastase. Okay. The Kerastase. <laughs> Kerastase shampoo for dry scalp. Bain anti pellicure. Why can't I read that? Ch- read the comments. 
<laughs> shampoo. Yeah, read the comments. So it's Graham Farrell, Good, one yeah, of the, the stylists of the salon. Yeah. It's brilliant, yeah. Um, Thanks, Graham. <laughs> excuse me. Geraldine Casey has joined us. Hi to Geraldine. Um, thanks for joining us. Um, remember, we have a couple of prizes we're going to give away very, very soon as well. And of course, if you have any <laughs> questions for Mirren, she can be contacted in the hair and beauty quarter in on High Street. Yeah, just send us a message. We're always hair, beauty questions, tan, nails, whatever your question is. And another one people are always uh, coming up about is spots, you know, <coughs> getting spots the week of your wedding or ba- breakouts in your skin and obviously a lot of that is related to stress there's not a lot you can do to keep the stress down on the run up to your wedding but um, if you have a good skincare routine well in advance that will generally help you know and your makeup artist will give you a bit of a hand you know you'll cover them on the day I think a lot of times those things are more you notice them more than somebody else looking at you on your wedding day you right, know okay, okay. Um, in relation to the lipstick colour and stuff like that what, what I mean what Colour schemes for a bride, is yeah. that very important? Is it, is it, do, should girls try different colours bef- in advance or should they, or what, I don't know. Yeah, well, I always say to a bride, if you're coming in for your trial, bring in photos of makeup looks that you have in mind, like the closer up the better. Um, so your idea of natural and my idea of natural might be completely different. You might right. think winged la- liner and a red lip is natural. Right. I, I don't, <laughs> you know, so it's great to to get photos because you're on the same page then as somebody. Right. Um, so that's that's the first kind of starting point to sit down with somebody you decide kind of what look you're going for. Um, your eye colour to me is the best way to pick what suits for your eyes. But does it matter what time of year you get married? Does that have an have, have I don't think so. Right, okay. Yeah, uh, it might depend on your, like, your style. If you like 50s, you might like the red lip and the winged liner. Right. Uh, some brides love like a big smoky eye. I would say if you, I would stick to... But that to was probably a look at, a, for, at a time, it'll probably come back in again, or it might yeah. never, it, might, it may not have never gone. Yeah, the smoky eye is still quite uh, big, but I would always go with a variation that's suitable for that bride. Right. So I'm looking at a photograph and I have a girl in front of me with green eyes and my bride has blue eyes and I know that like browns and golds are going to make that girl's eyes pop out. Right. I would do what I think is best, right. but I'd have a good consultation. And if you want to try something different, we'll try that as well. Okay. In relation to bridesmaids then, is there anything that they should be aware of? trying to keep their skin in good condition as well should obviously. they start at six months out as well yeah they can't, uh, if, if if you're going to be a bridesmaid at a wedding you're going to want to look your best yeah obviously not wanting to outshine the no. bride because <laughs> you'd be killed <laughs> um but you do want to look well yeah for the photos and because you know it's a special day it's a yeah. you know if, if you're privileged to have been asked to be a bridesmaid to a bride then you know you must be somebody yeah. fairly special yeah absolutely uh, you should start a few months before obviously if you've good skin don't worry too much about it it's not a priority maybe your condition might be that your nails are bad and you want to grow those there's loads of there's a treatment called nail cheeks uh, two plus available online use that for a few months you kind of layer it on top of each other so that's something you could do for two months before the wedding if you wanted your nails to look really well for the wedding if it is your skin start a skincare routine or go and speak to somebody in that profession you know there's loads of skincare therapists okay. um, and they will advise you on what's best for your skin okay 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 yeah. i'm gonna have one quick one more look at see if there's any other questions after coming in there's um lots of well done's and great advice type of stuff um so we're going to pick. We're going to we're going to call it there. We're going to pick Perfect. a winner. Which one will we give away first? Uh, we will, will give away the curse dust first. Okay. So <laughs> we'll give, how, how do, do I, you do this? I don't know. <laughs> do you want to do it later on online? We, and post it later. Yeah. 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 Okay. okay. Cool. Before I go, I'll just give my kind of tips as well for yeah. the bride, just for the morning of the wedding. It's just a few things you notice as you're going along. I'm sure you've discussed it. I know you've discussed it before in the show, but I'll just say it again for people who might not have watched before. Having a time plan for the morning of your wedding is the day probably of your wedding, but for the morning because we're it's there critical, for it. Isn't it. Absolutely critical. And not changing it and saying, well, actually, Anne Marie is going to get her hair done now, but then when her makeup is due, there's two people doing makeup at the same time. Sit down with your makeup artist. If, if we're doing a wedding, we put it in place for you if we're doing hair and makeup. 
but sit down with your makeup artist and say to her, can we come up with a plan for the morning of my wedding? Because you want to be finished a bride an hour before she's due to leave. Yeah, at, at least, least. At least. If not a little bit earlier. If I'm working with Richard McCarthy, I have to have an hour and a half. I say yeah. to the bride, who's your photographer? Yeah. You know, and I know by the photographer how early they're going to be there. But it, it makes their morning 10 times more relaxed. Yeah. They just enjoy it so much more. I know people think we're a bit like crazy <laughs> and I am a bit crazy about the time plan. If somebody goes to change it on me, I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm like, change it the week before, but make sure that on the day of yeah. that you are totally relaxed and that you have nothing to worry about. You're going to enjoy it so much more. That last hour, you know it. The last hour is very, very special. And it is. It does fly. I mean, I would always recommend that the bride is ready to get into her dress an hour and a half. I agree, with Richard. Yeah. An hour and a half before she's before the ceremony is due to start. One, because depending on the dress, it might take 15 minutes to get yeah. in the dress. It might take 20 minutes. By the time she gets down the stairs, you're, there's a half an hour gone. Yeah. By the time she gets a couple of family shots done, a couple of shots with the bridesmaid, that's another half an hour gone. And at that stage, the photographer, the video guy, is gone out of the house Absolutely, yeah. and to the church to try and make sure well, in our case, we already have, I'll already have, um, um, Brian will be at the church and he'll be all set up, ready to go. But the photographer will want to get a couple of shots of the lads at the church. Yeah. He might have been already at their house that morning, but he'll also want to get a couple of shots of them. Plus, you'll have last few minute bits and pieces to do, making sure um, everything is, making sure the house is locked, making yeah. sure your, 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 your bag for the hotel is in somebody's car, it's not forgotten about, you haven't forgotten this, you haven't forgotten that, you've got the garter on, whatever. Yeah. You know, so you do need, you need your makeup and hair done yeah. at least about an hour and a half, would you, you agree? You just want to enjoy those few moments and relax before it gets to that hectic day. And enjoy, enjoy the, 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 yeah, the, the wedding, the day. Yeah, with your parents or your sisters or some, your bridesmaids, people who are special to you yeah. and enjoy it and don't get hung up on the small detail I was in a house actually where <coughs> the bride's wedding dress she went to try it on an hour before her wedding and the lining had completely ripped out of her dress and a neighbour down the road had to come up and sew it and I thought oh my god this girl is she'll know who she is <laughs> I thought she's going to go mad and she's going to be so stressed out and she was like so what sure I'll just rip the lining out it won't be the end of the world she got it sewed she was 10 minutes late for the church so no big deal she she was was so a lot relaxed. of guys arrived later than 10 minutes and nothing happened yeah. <laughs> she was so relaxed and I was like well fair play to you because I've seen some small things go wrong like number plates missing for a car like really really small insignificant detail that people let it kind of consume their morning and I'm yeah. like don't let that stuff ruin like that's your special all you, all, day all you can really do on the lead up to your wedding is plan 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 like the skincare yeah. regime, like the, the eyelashes, like the colour coordination with, with regards the makeup and all the rest of it. But on the day of the wedding. Yeah, enjoy it. Just it's back. just one day. You've spent all this time working on it. Yeah. So just enjoy it, relax and have fun with your bridesmaids. Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> that's where we're going to leave it for tonight. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget, you can watch the other shows if you haven't seen them already. They'll be up. They're all up on our YouTube channel. Check out My Wedding Store on YouTube. Um, the edited version of this will be put up in a couple of days' time when we get a chance to edit it. Once again, I want to say thanks very much Thank you. Thanks to Marin much. Thanks for joining Brian. us tonight and giving us all those great tips. If you have any questions for Marin, you can either leave them in the comment section below or you can message Marin in the Hair and Beauty Quarter. You'll find them on Facebook yep. or pop into her salon in uh, High Street. Is it 38 High Street? 38 High Street, yeah. It says Hair and Beauty Quarter above. <laughs> thanks to Brian for looking after the production. Um, Hope you enjoy, enjoyed the show. We're back again next week. Next week we have Patrick Brown from Patrick Brown Design joining us. So he's going to be giving his tips and advice on your invitations, your table plan, your thank you cards, all of that type of stuff. So if you have, uh, haven't got your invitations organised yet, then make sure to tune in. The following week, which it's, I think is the 21st, not sure, the following oh, weekend, yes. uh, we have Michelle Baxter from David McConville oh, yeah. joining us and um, she's going to be giving some tips and advice on teeth whitening and straightening and all that type of stuff and the week after then with any luck we'll have somebody along to talk about wedding bands wedding rings engagement rings all of that type of stuff and remember on the 2nd of August we have our first of our dresses show and we'll have a special guest that night and we'll also have a very special presenter as well so thanks for watching until the next time have a great week and if you're getting married this weekend 
Remember what Maren said, don't stress out about the small little things. Everything will work out fine. Take your time, enjoy the day. And if you're going to a wedding this weekend and you need your makeup done, talk to Maren. Until then, <laughs> thanks very much and good night. Thank you.